What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number four of Park to Prem here with Nottingham Forest. Today we have got a huge game against Stoke in the league. They sit in third, we sit in fifth. This is going to be a big one. Hopefully we're going to come out on top. Of course last time you were here, which if you missed it, go watch it. We were crazily busy in the transfer market. You may notice we have a new key player and that is because uh, our transfer business wasn't done when I thought it was done back in January. We've done a little bit more business, so let's talk about it. In terms of ins and outs, just a couple of extra players leaving us. Um, you can see here Callum Wilson has gone to Silver Spore in Turkey on a free transfer. Billy Byrne has ended up going to Cardiff City for 2.5 million. He wanted out. He wasn't going to renew his contract, so I had to just cash in on him, sadly. And the other player who left us of real note was a player we already knew was leaving, but he has now officially gone. And Gamalo has left to go to Krasnodar. Nadar, a player who was not really featuring in the first team. His move to Russia was pre-arranged months ago as a result. He's been sat in the reserves, but nevertheless, not an insignificant of money received. 8.5 million if all goes to plan. And while looking at the ins, we've, we've done a little bit of business here as well. Of course, I left things with Finley Robinson having just joined the club, and we've made two extra additions Two centre-backs, one of which has not got a work permit, and that is Ham Sang OK. I feel like this guy's nickname and name just has loads of potential. I feel like we're going to be able to ask him if he's OK just all the time. Either way, he's got six international caps for career. He's 18 years old. His scout report said he has Premier League potential. Let's hope he can live up to that, and let's hope that he is going to be able to get a work permit sooner rather than later. And the last player we've signed is Piotr Peterzak. I think I might just call him Peter, Peter everyone. He is a Polish centre-back, four international caps. He's only 18 years old with professional personality. Chelsea were interested in him, but we beat them to his signature. And whilst I wasn't necessarily in the market for another centre-back, when the opportunity came along to snap this guy up, it was just a bit of a no-brainer. You know, when you can sign a player this good for absolutely peanuts, you, you just do it, don't you? And, uh, well, in terms of the run of form since you last here, we've actually looked really, really good, which is particularly pleasing. But that has come um, due to changes more than anything else, I feel like. And uh, I've looked to, you know, change this system up a little bit to help it kind of best make the use of our players but also hopefully cover some of the the issues I was noticing game to game um, I know there were some comments in the comment section of yesterday's video saying Jack why not just play the 4 2 3 one honestly I've played that formation a lot this year along with 4 4 2 I see this Nottingham Forest uh, team it's a bit of a challenge to do something a little bit different tactically to show that you don't have to just play to a meta to make things work and play the same way and this system's worked really well. So I want to talk about the changes that I've made to it since you were last here, because there has been a few. Um, you'll notice on the wider centre-backs, we've got the added instruction, stay wider. Um, this encourages them when we're in possession of the ball to go wide. With the absence of full-backs, you know, we want to be uh, creating the, you know, most clear passing channels and having wider centre-backs that go wider when we're building up play from the back definitely helps with that. On the defensive wingers, I've got them marked specific position and they are marking the right attacking mid and the left attacking mid, which is a little counterintuitive. Um, you may wonder, Jack, why would you not play with wing-backs rather than defensive wingers? And the simple answer is, I want to apply pressure high up the pitch. I want to pin teams back and I want to see our defensive wingers push on to fullbacks. But very often on the opposite side of the pitch to where play was going on, so say the play's over where Roger is, their right attacking mid would just be in a lot of space. And with this change in instruction, Smith will look to pick up that man, which is really nice. And in addition to that, you'll notice a bit of a change in shape up front, and one that has worked really well. Uh, Rian Brewster, in his new position, has got seven goals for us. He's been in great goal-scoring form. And we're playing, we're playing with two deep-lying forwards either side of an advanced forward. And these deep-lying forwards... They're given quite a unique role in the system, which I hope will be on display as we take on Stoke. Um, they are marking the left-back and right-back, respectively. But they're also set to roam from position. And really, these players have free roam. And very often, when they're tracking the full-backs back, um, they'll take up positions in wider areas, which are a little unusual for a striker. Uh, but they will look to just drop into spaces behind Samake as well, which is really important. Because we only have a box-to-box -box midfielder alongside a deep-line playmaker, um, we need players in the middle who are going to help link up the play. And the deep-line forwards have that free roam to, you know, mark players in the wide area, stretch teams when we're trying to press. Um, but also, you know, when we're building up play, they will drop into pockets of space behind Samake and in front of Samake, um, which really just opens up avenues when we're playing the ball around. Um, you will also notice 
if I just show you the outer possession, uh, we have a low line of engagement, but with a high line. And basically what this means is we're really compacting the pitch down. Um, I felt like when we played maybe sitting deeper or with a really high line of engagement, we were creating problems for ourselves. With this system, when we're without the ball, we don't look to press right away. But when we do, do turn over possession, um, it tends to be in the midfield and quite high up the pitch. Um, at the same time, we kind of bait teams in, I suppose, to just lumping the ball forward, which for the most part has worked well. Um, I'm not going to sit here and claim that defensively I'm 100% happy with how things are working right now. But in general, this system of not engaging super high up the pitch, but as soon as they enter kind of our wheelhouse where we want to press, we will look to try and force an error out, try and force, you know, turnovers of the ball. Um, it's worked in terms of getting us goals, if not always defending. And, well, you, the proof is in the pudding, I suppose. You can see the results since you were last here. After the Villa game, I looked to experiment a little bit. And, in fact, uh, obviously, we talked about the 3-4-3 as an option. If I just insert a column of formation, which I hope is going to work, you can see here it works for some of the games. Uh, following on from the game against Villa, I made this change to the free up top system. I didn't really like Brewster playing as a centre attack in mid. He wasn't really shining there. With this change, he has started to shine there. And, uh, well, you will see that in these games. Against Huddersfield, we beat them 4-1. A really convincing result. Mighton with a hat-trick. Sigaros also got a late goal for us in this game. The Greek uh, international just doing bits, everyone. He's been developing really well as our backup defensive left winger. Came on in this game for Smith and showed us what he's made of. Against Crystal Palace, a team who were definitely up there in the promotion battle. We beat them convincingly. Wilson Samake, two goals to his name. Rian Brewster getting two goals to his name. And as you will notice, in this recent run of games, Brewster has been in absolutely scintillating form. Anyway, the next game was against QPR, one of the tighter games we've had in this run of fixtures. It was a real um, battle, this one, and I was hoping it was going to be a bit plainer sailing. Having beaten Crystal Palace 5-0, confidence was high, and so when Brewster got us off to a flyer, I was feeling pretty good about things. But Chad Cutler pulled one back for them very, very early on. And it was a little bit of a sign of things to come. QPR were not going to go down without fighting. In the second half, Wilson Samake helped us reinstate our lead. They did pull one goal back, though, through Shaw. Definitely not saying that name correctly. He scored for them in the 86th minute. But Matty Longstaff on off the bench to be a hero. A long-range shot outside the area into the bottom corner. And proving that despite you know the new additions at centre mid, like Finley Robertson... He still very much has a role to play in this team. Matty Longstaff, he's got plenty of goals for the club, far exceeding his XG. He loves his long shots, even though they're only at 13. Um, yeah, he was really, really good for us in this game here. Anyway, the next game, not quite so good. The one defeat in this run of fixtures against Br Bristol Rovers. Simply put, we weren't good enough. Uh, Zane Walker scored for them in the 11th minute. Tom Lowery then scored for them in the second half. It's difficult to pinpoint exactly what went wrong with this game. It was a game where we did have the higher XG. Um, I feel like we created opportunities and perhaps on another day we would have won the match. Uh, we had a lot of chances in the second half and later on in the first half. We started a little bit slowly, to be fair, when they got their first goal. Always had us on the back foot. Um, but you can see here, just looking at the match stats, 90% of passes completed, 56% of possession. Playing this really possession-centric 3-4-3 with the fluid deep line forwards, it's worked really nicely. And as you can see, the proofs in the put We're dominating games, even if we're not always getting the results. Anyway, we beat Sheffield Wednesday 4-2. This was a really, really good result in this one. Um, they took the lead through Turic, who would go on to get two goals in this game. He scored the only goal of the first half, but it burst into life in the second. Balogun scored for us, of course, uh, the second American in our team. Uh, he was actually starting this game. Bit of rotation needed. Alex Mighton had been struggling. Great to see him get on the score sheet. Unfortunately, we did go 2-1 down, but, well, the good news is, as you already know, we fought back. Gregory Roger out on the right-hand side. You know, the full-back who we've converted to a defensive winger. He has goals in him, everyone. Um, really nice finish by him. Rian Brewster then scored from the penalty spot. And late on in the game, Finley Robertson scored. You might notice that American Mighton... He scored a Rabo well, he didn't score, he assisted with a Rabona by putting it into the cross. Also, didn't get the assist either. But he did a Rabona, everyone, which normally I'd be annoyed about, but it resulted in a goal, so we'll forgive him. Anyway, the final game that we had most recently was against Luton. A 5-2 win here. Goals were flowing. Robertson with one. Longstaff with one. Rian Brewster with a couple. Samake continuing on with his goal-scoring antics. Takes him to 19 for the season, along with eight assists. He's right up there in terms of the league's kind of highest average ratings. 
He's been absolutely superb for us. You can also see Healy leading the way when it comes to assists. Ben Cottrell, former Lincoln man, contracted to Cardiff. Don't know what to make of that. They sold him for £1 million. Um, he got a lot of assists at Lincoln. He's not played so much at Cardiff City, which I think is testament to where Cardiff are at versus Lincoln City, of course, our former club. So you may have noticed with these results, defensively, we've not been great, but we're scoring lots of goals. And I'm kind of going in with the mindset of, with a 3-4-3 like this, you are going to just give up a lot of goals. When you're playing three at the back, especially without wing-backs the way that we're playing, we have to accept that we are going to concede goals. And I'm still looking at ways, of course, that we can eliminate them. But with this new system, the goals have been flowing. We've talked about Brewster's goal scoring. Mighton has been struggling a little bit with fitness. He's been tiring a little bit. But the good news is he's fresh as a daisy and ready to go today. Samake's been great up front. And uh, all in all... I feel like things are starting to click. I feel like this is a system that has some potential. I'm sure there will still be minor amends needed here and there. But we keep the ball well. We knock the ball around well. Got really, really good players playing with the ball. And I do think the changes to the defensive wingers with the man marking and also the deep lying forwards and kind of how they man mark but also have this free roam role um, it turned our fortunes around. And as you can see, looking at the league table, 10 games left of the season. I am looking at Middlesbrough thinking, you're only in second. Could we catch them? Maybe. Swansea City, of course, were right down there at the bottom of the league um, when we took over at Nottingham Forest and when we turned them down. They've been on a great run of form. So kind of the tale of two teams on the up. Today's game against Stoke is a big one. A win here and we can close the gap on them down to two points. Also worth noting that Middlesbrough is the final game of the league season, everyone. Yes, that's right. The last game that we have this year is against Middlesbrough. Make of that what you will, but I have a sneaking suspicion that game might have a little bit on the line when we're here for it next time. Anyway, I know there's going to have been some calls to do this game against Lincoln that's coming up after Stoke, but this game here away from home, I think, provides a bigger test. We've already annihilated Lincoln once. The last couple of episodes have been slightly on the longer side. So for those of you who only have a 20-minute lunch break, I want to make an episode that you can hopefully cram in before your boss notices that you're slacking and watching Football Manager videos on your break. And uh, well, hopefully we're going to get a result here. Hopefully we're going to continue on with the fine run of form that we've been on and you're going to get a chance to see this new system in action. And I say new system, obviously it's not that different to what we were playing previously, but the little refinements we've made, the little changes we've made work really, really nicely. Um, the defensive wingers man marking, um, you know, obviously means they do drop back. They do mark, you know, reasonably tightly. But at the same time, they do tend to do, uh, they're defending higher up the pitch when they can. Oh my word, Stokes called into action early after a minute is a bit concerning, isn't it? I will say that we've not really noticed the lack of our former goalkeeper. Stokes has let, settled in really well in goal. Uh, he's actually got an average rating above 7.1, which when you consider how much we were struggling previously is uh, kind of interesting to note. You know, uh, uh, we've been conceding loads of goals. His average ratings are really high. I've also noticed here, they're playing a 4-3-1-2. Now, this is not a formation we've met before. So this is going to be a little bit interesting because the defensive wingers actually have significantly less to worry about. And with that in mind, I'm going to make a little bit of a change here, everyone. I'm going to change them to wingers rather than defensive wingers. We're going to match their three-man kind of attack with the centre attack him in and two strikers with our three defenders, hope that they can kind of pick up a man each, and I'm going to look to exploit the wide areas. Either way, 35 minutes gone, not many highlights yet in this game. Stoke with an early one here as the ball's attempted to be played through, but it goes straight to Stokes. And uh, well, you can see here how we like to shape up and build from the back. We have great passes in our ranks. Our three centre-backs have had absolutely insane average ratings as of late. Actually, most of the team has. The real exception has been the players in the wide areas, but I feel like they're more a victim of the match engine and the system than anything else. Roger plays it back to Robertson. Longstaff with it, knocking the ball around nicely. Jones kicks it away, but Grimes is just going to read that. Step out as the stopper and collect it. Lovely build-up play here. Brewster, Roger... Knocking the ball around superbly. Is there an end product here? Goes back to Longstaff. Dinks it into Smith. That's what we're all about. The defensive wingers getting higher up the pitch in a winger system. Getting into the box. So many players. You can see how we're able to score so many goals. Just players queuing up left, right and centre to try and make something happen here. Um, they're just completely overwhelmed at the back. We've just got more men than Stoke at the back post. The free man is picked out. 1-0 Forest. This could end up being a really big result if we can... Well, cement our lead in this game. I will say it's been a very even first half. Perhaps even Stoke going to feel hard done by not to have won this game. 
or not to be winning in this game, or not to be in this game, I should say. Going to tell the players I'm not happy. I feel like there's a lot to come from us in this second half. Looking for a, a good reaction on the whole. A little bit uncharacteristic. You've seen how much the goals are flowing so far in this game. Not as many, but we've got a set piece here. It's whipped in Roberts on his left foot, just the wrong side of the post, unfortunately for us. But straight into another highlight. So it looks like we might have a slightly more action-packed second half. Maybe some tiring legs coming into play. Ball switched over to Edwards here. Free, really, on the overlap. Pulls it back to Harding. It's blocked away. Smith, maybe playing on the winger role, not able to pick up the man quite as effectively as the fullback looks for the overlap. Anyway, Smith bringing it down this side. Can we make something happen in the box? Whips it in. Brewster's there at the back post. He hits the woodwork. And unfortunately, it's going to go out for a goal kick. But really good opportunity there. Great chance created. Unfortunately, the end product lacking a little. I will say, pretty pleasantly surprised by how our system has done thus far against this rather unfamiliar setup. Um, you'll also notice, what the hell is that long throw? I was going to say, you'll also notice I've got long throws set up now. This is not something I've really made use of in FM21, but if you played FM20 yourself, you'll know that long throws were particularly effective. Um, I've noticed that with the old like regular corner routines, or rather throw-in routines, because you've only got the defensive winger to take the throw in, they really struggle to find anyone to pass to. So I've had to go for a longer kind of throw routine just to cover off that slightly weird weakness in the system um it's the center back positioning in the wide areas isn't that great around throw in so with that in mind we've kind of got a custom routine going which seems to have worked a little better albeit we're not quite getting the same number of goals you might have expected if you were do, to do the same thing in fm 21 or fm 20 rather anyway Adrian Smith is absolutely knackered, so despite him scoring, we're going to bring in Seagross. Elsewhere, Matty Longstaff is tired as hell. I'm going to take off Longstaff, bring in Gary Healy, who's been carrying a little bit of a knock. I've got one last sub in my back pocket. I'm going to take off Samake, bring in Balogun. That might be a controversial change, but with 10 minutes left, need to get some fresh legs into the team. We are tiring a little, and well, Stoke, they've got a chance here. They will fancy their chances to get back into this game and pull one back. Shot is blocked, falls to Epbo. It's cleared away. It was offside. I don't think it would have mattered anyway, but live to fight another day. Also, just going to start time-wasting everyone. Four minutes left. This is not a particularly sexy result. It's not a particularly sexy game, but you know what? We need wins at the moment, and if we can beat the team in third 1-0, I will absolutely take it. A very, very weird game. Hardly a classic. Um, I don't feel like we saw the system at its best, to be honest, in that game there, but all in all... We've managed to get the results. Smith's out for one to three days with a tight groin. Um, if we actually look at the match stats for the game, how did they end up? You can see here we had 56% of possession. Our pass completion just really, really high. We had 300 and what, two passes, was that? 302 to their 200 passes. So we really did dominate the play, knocking the ball around nicely. Um, and despite all the corners that Stoke had, they couldn't make it happen. I know Ryan Shawcross, our director of football, and Peter Crouch... Former Stoke lad, lads, they're going to absolutely be loving it. But no, that is a good little result for us there. Anyway, as I said, not the longest of episodes today, but a crucial one nevertheless. In terms of when we'll be back, I'm looking at that Middlesbrough game to end the season. Potentially going to have to bundle it in with games against Bristol City and Millwall, depending on just what's on the line. If we actually look at the, the roundup of results, but Middlesbrough have not played yet. Middlesbrough, when do you play? I almost want to just go forward to their result. They play later on today. They play at 5.30. They've just played. What was the score in their game? They won 1-0. No. Well, if we were hoping for them to slip up, it's not quite happened there. But there is still plenty of football between now and the end of the year. I feel like right now, just cementing a playoff spot has to be the, the big aim, the main aim. It's incredibly close. Swansea City, Bristol City, Brentford, all teams very much in the hunt. Hopefully... Our current system, which has provided more goals than the last game, is going to provide a few more goals in our upcoming run of results. Although, maybe I should be happy that we kept a clean sheet. So, I think that's going to wrap things up from me today, guys. Let me know what you make of the new 3-4-3. Three, three. I'm disappointed we didn't really get to see it more in action. With the weird formation that we went up against, I had to change things up. I was quite excited about showing you it against teams that have wide attacking midfielders. Because I feel like that's where we've had a lot of our success. Where you have wingers and potentially fullbacks or wingbacks looking to hit on the overlap. Stoke... They, they didn't want to play to the script, did they? They wanted to do their own thing. I can't really begrudge them for that too much. You can just see, if we just look at the squad and look at the average ratings, look at the green, everyone. We're playing well. We're looking good. 
end of season tomorrow is going to be a big one. Hopefully we can be targeting the playoffs, if not automatic promotion. And well, until then, thank you for watching. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.